I came in here the other day and I just happened to look in this tank and he was on eggs. Now you can see we've got a ton of these peppermint crystal nuts in here. So, but you can see we've got a bunch of these royal whiptail eggs in this tumbler now. Annoyingly overnight, some of our eggs have fungused over. So you can see. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So. In today's vlog, we're gonna be having a look at some of the things going on in the fish room. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's kinda of happened since the last vlog, and I'm gonna show you guys what those things are in a second. I'm also gonna give you guys a quick update on the things that we were working on in the previous vlog. In our previous vlog, we dropped off some fish and we cleared out a ton of space in the fish room. So I've got to do a lot of organizing in the fish room and reorganize certain things because you know there's like a few angel fish in this tank which need to be moved and things like that to make space for other things. So there's also that boring stuff that I've got to do but we also a couple of vlogs ago got some hillstream loaches. So if we come down here you can see our hillstream loaches are doing fantastic. Now they're really really active. You can see we've got one guy down here, there's another guy down behind that rock and they're just a lot more playful lately and I've seen that they've been interacting with each other quite a bit more. Now I've been feeding these guys baby brine shrimp and I've been feeding them some zucchini and occasionally they've been getting some rapashi super green and some rapashi grub pie. But they've been doing fantastic, they've been flirting and I'm not sure whether we've got mixed sexes. I just think we're gonna have to wait and see if we get any babies in this tank but hopefully we do. You can see right there, that's some of the flirting I've been seeing. So that just might be some sparring, or well, that could be a male and a female actually trying to breed there. So I'm really hopeful with these guys. I know that a lot of people in Australia want them. And I've been getting hounded with messages from people asking when these are gonna be available. So I think everyone just needs to be patient and let me try and figure out how to breed these guys reliably. And I can guarantee that they'll be on the website eventually. But they've been doing fantastic. But we've got some more good news. So if we come over this side of the fish room and come on up to this tank up here, in the last vlog, we cleared out a ton of these Corydoras. Now, this tank is a little bit dirty. Uh, there's just a lot of debris in the water because there's a lot of these Corydoras in this tank. But this is a Cory grow out. But I also have some Royal Whiptails in here. Now I've got a big male, which is sitting over here. You can see him here. He's quite freaky. And you can tell he's a male because he's got those Odontas. I think that's what they're called, Odontals don't know what the name is. On the side of him, so you can see like these whiskers on him here. Now he's been chilling out here because there's tons of flow from this power head, but we also have two females in here. So I think that might be one female. You can see her nose there in the middle of the screen. And there's another one somewhere in here, but I came in here the other day and I just happened to look in this tank and he was on eggs. Now, they didn't do a very good job spawning because they knocked a bunch of the eggs all over the floor of this tank, but I picked them up and I put them in this this breeder box. I don't think this is a breeder box. I think this is like one of their egg tumblers. But you can see we've got a bunch of these royal whiptail eggs in this tumbler now. I'm not too sure how many there are, but there's quite a few in here and we're gonna be giving it a really red hot crack at trying to raise some of these guys up because I think that this female and male are going to breed again very soon, so we're going to have a few chances, but part of the trouble with whiptails is raising the fry is quite tricky, especially in that first day when they need to feed, because apparently the fry are really stupid, and um, they don't go to food very easily, and they don't attach to food very easily, so they're a little bit fussy, so we're going to be trying very, very hard to try and get as many of these guys up as possible, because yeah, a lot of people do struggle with it. So you can see all those eggs there. They are fertilized. I've been picking out any of them that aren't fertilized, but all of these guys are fertilized. But I'm really excited to have these guys breeding now. I'm such an idiot. The female is right below here. So she's near these eggs. I think she's been kind of like sitting around them weirdly. So I'm wondering if she's thinking she's taking care of them or something. I doubt she thinks that at all. I think she's just here by chance because it's right in the flow. So hopefully she fattens up and gives us another clutch very soon. But what we're going to be doing is trying to raise them in one of these hang-on breeder boxes and we're going to be feeding them rapashi and we're going to be feeding them tons of almond leaves and I'm just going to be giving them a ton of baby brine shrimp as well and we're just going to be trying really really hard with them. Excuse the horrible glare but if we come up here to this other Zis container you can see we've got a ton of these peppermint bristle nose in here. So the male that was on eggs last time in the last vlog actually kicked those eggs out and I put them in one of these tumblers and they've all hatched out. Now the other male down here is still on eggs, so he's actually on a clutch right now that's the same age. So in a couple days time, we're gonna be taking these guys out and we're gonna be putting them in their own grow out tank, but there's quite a few of these guys in here, so you can see them all there. I think I'm probably gonna to have to take them out tomorrow because there's still some of that yolk sack on them. You can see right there, there's actually one that was didn't make it as well. That's still in there, but these can go into a grow out tank very soon. And yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on them. 
And then if we come up here to our hatcheries as well, I can give you guys a quick update on the rainbow fish and the celestial pearl danio breeding. So this method for hatching out the celestial pearl danio eggs is working fantastic. We have quite a few little hatchlings in here, so you can see that little line there in the middle of the screen would be a little baby celestial pearl danio. We have about 15 of them in here. So it wasn't a great job by the parents fertilizing these eggs, but nonetheless, we do have some in here. So there's one there, and these guys are gonna start free swimming probably tomorrow, and I can start to feed them some infusoria. And then over here in our rainbow fish hatcheries, we didn't have as many as I would've hoped for. And these are the dwarf neon rainbows, so we've only got a few in this batch, and the same goes for this batch over here. And we actually didn't get any uh, turquoise rainbows this time, but we did get a few bosmanis. So I think that's just largely due to the planaria in these mops, so I'm going to have to figure out a new method for trying to get these guys to spawn. I might have to take the colonies out and spawn them in separate tanks or something like that. We also have a few more celestial pearl danio eggs in this tub here, so all that breeding's going well. I'm just experimenting at the moment and trying to figure out some really good breeding routines, but I guess that's all the updates for now. That's what's been going on in the fish room, and I'm going to get to work on, you know, I've got to finish painting this tank, and I've got to clean up some tanks, and yeah, I'm just going to get to work. Okay, so it's now the next day and we're back in the fish room and we've kind of done some of the jobs that we were going to do. A lot of these jobs have been pretty tricky. I've still got to catch out a few of these angels that just have been so annoying to catch. And I've also got a ton of bristlenose down in this tank down here because this tank is a crystal red shrimp breeding tank. You can see we've got a really good colony going on down here, but I threw a clutch of bristlenose eggs in here that were kicked out by the male just because I thought that these guys would eat the fungus off of them and I actually didn't even think the eggs were going to be fertilized if I'm being honest and you can see down the bottom a bunch of these guys have hatched out and I've just been trying to catch them out because I don't want them to grow out in here. So it's just super annoying, I'm going to have to really gradually just keep working on trying to get as many of these guys out as possible but I've been working on that which is super frustrating. Another super frustrating thing is catching out all the bristlenose in here so you can see like right there on the left is a little baby bristlenose and these are the peppermint bristlenose. And I've been trying to catch out all these guys because what happens is every time I take a clutch of eggs out, there's one or two or three, they stay in the cave or something like that and I can't get them out. So I just put the cave back in and they grow out. And in this instance, I left the cave in there a day early and all of the fry came out pretty much. So there's tons of fry still in this tank that I've been slowly getting out, but it's just super annoying to catch them all out. And the same goes for this tank here. So. I've just been slowly chipping away at that, but that's probably the worst thing about having a fish room is doing those stupid jobs. They're really, really annoying to do. We did just strip a bunch of bristlenose and we also put a bunch from that Zis hatchery in here as well. So you can see they're all in there. There's probably gonna be a bunch behind that sponge filter at the back. And yeah, we've just got mountains of peppermint bristlenose in the fish room at the moment, which is excellent. But some bad news has happened overnight. And this is just something that's part of, you know, learning to breed new fish. And if we come over here to our whiptail tank, annoyingly overnight, some of our eggs are fungused over. So you can see inside of the hatchery, we've got some eggs that are still fertilized, but a lot of them fungused over. And that's because this stupid valve up here, it's one of the really cheap Chinese ones. And what happened was I switched it down so there wasn't a crazy amount of flow because the eggs were just going like crazy like this. And overnight, it just seems to have adjusted itself and it went basically to no flow. And a lot of the eggs just died because they weren't getting oxygen. So that's pretty frustrating. I guess we're just gonna have to wait for the next batch. So I'm gonna really try and fatten up our female and get her to spawn again. But we'll give it our best shot with these eggs and try and get as many of them to grow up as possible. But yeah, that's super frustrating. <laughs>